Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I want to talk about how a number of brokers will go bankrupt during the squeeze. I also want to talk a bit more about what's to come over the next few weeks and the next few months for the wider market. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, you may remember a few days ago I made a video on the recent nickel short squeeze. Jack Farchi just tweeted saying that LME Chief Executive Matt Chamberlain told Bloomberg this morning that if the exchange hadn't cancelled a number of trades, several brokers would have struggled to survive. From the Bloomberg article, it says the LME Chief Executive Officer, Matt Chamberlain, defended the decision, saying that some brokers would have struggled if the nickel trades had stood and weren't cancelled and unwound. He said it would have been extremely difficult for some of our market participants to continue their activities, Chamberlain said in an interview with Bloomberg TV. The ability of the financial system to get that money to the members in London and then into the exchange, I think, would have been significantly stressed. For brokers on the LME, Tuesday's drama was a throwback to the exchange's darkest days. The last time that LME suspended trading in one of its contracts was during the 1985 tin crisis, where an international producer's cartel collapsed after it could no longer prop up the tin price. That crisis was a harrowing experience that changed the shape of the market. Many historic brokers were forced out of business from the losses and according to LME law, the stress from the crisis shortened a number of lives. Now you may say, Tom, that must have been an absolutely catastrophic short squeeze for the LME exchange to cancel a number of trades and suspend trading on both sides. Jim Bianco just posted a thread on the LME situation and why it should bother everyone in the market. It's a blatant disregard for the rules to protect one Chinese tycoon against the market and he believes it's far worse than what happened to GameStop and AMC. He says Tsingshang is China's largest nickel producer with $40 billion in revenues. It's run by its founder, Zhang Guanda, and his moniker is the big shot. Take that to mean he has a huge ego. Zhang Guanda shorted 100,000 tons of nickel, which yes, that is a huge amount. 100,000 tons of nickel at the previous price of $20,000 per ton is around $2 billion. At the very tippy top of the squeeze before trading was suspended, that would have been worth around $10 billion. Therefore, that's around an $8 billion margin call that Zhuang Guanda just suffered. Jing was counseled to rein in this massive short, but he's the big shot and runs Sing Sheng, so he knows better than everyone, obviously. In retrospect, this position was causing market imbalances. This imbalance often shows up when all markets are stressed, like they were or are with Russia invading Ukraine and the current political climate. The market moved against him enough to get a margin call. By all accounts, he simply said that he did not want to pay for that margin call. So the LME gave him a reprieve, and in other words, the LME ignored its own rules and let him not pay the margin call, but didn't liquidate his position. Why? Maybe because he's the big shot, a made player, and his broker was the state-owned China Construction Bank, and the LME is owned by the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. Hong Kong, as of 2020, is also now part of China. When he was given his reprieve, the market had an offside player that could be squeezed, so prices rocketed 250% to $100,000 per tonne. At that point, not only did he not want to pay for the margin call, but he also couldn't pay for the margin call. Not to worry, the LME halted trading and cancelled trades back down to $50,000 per tonne. You may say, Tom, that's absolutely crazy. How many trades did the LME cancel? Did they just cancel one or two large trades or did they wipe out thousands of trades? Mark Thompson tweeted saying, I've been looking at the nickel trade data for Tuesday morning and the cancelled LME trades. The numbers are quite staggering. There was over 9,000 trade lots that were actually cancelled. Those 9,000 trades had a total contract value of $3.9 billion. By cancelling and unwinding all of those trades, it moved the price of nickel back down to $48,000 per tonne, and that wiped out around $1.3 billion worth of profits on those 9,000 trades. 
and he says for an exchange to cancel 5,000 combined trades for a total of 9,000 individual trades and to do so retrospectively does not sit well with me at all. These trades were between willing buyers and willing sellers in a functioning market. None of those trades were fraudulent, none of those trades were forced or under duress, they were all functioning trades placed in a functioning market. And he says this creates serious credibility issues for the LME. Where is the line? If they can do this retrospectively in nickel, what else can they do? How can you trade on an exchange if you do not have certainty that your profits will be paid and others will be let off from their losses? But to make matters worse for the LME, Xing Wanda, the big shot, wants to stay in his short position on the LME and doesn't want to pay for that margin call. He's more than happy for all of the trades to be unwound and now he wants to stay in his short position and potentially even add to his short position. The LME initially said that nickel trading would restart tomorrow but they've put that on hold because obviously the LME want Jing Wanda to close out of his position and not continue to short nickel. The theory is that those short imbalances still exist and the price could skyrocket back over $100,000 per tonne and double his margin. Then again, the LME would have to cancel even more trades. Guys, many of you may not have a lot of confidence in the stock market at the moment. There's all of this market manipulation and market fraud that seems to be going entirely unpunished. And that's why I personally also invest in cryptocurrency, especially during this big dip. With BlockFi, you can not only invest in crypto, but you can also get up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you sign up using the link in the description below and make your first deposit. More than 500,000 people and 350 institutions globally use BlockFi to manage over $10 billion in assets. BlockFi is also an entirely free platform that has no minimum balance. And BlockFi also offers a rewards credit card with an introductory rate of 3.5% cash back on your purchases, also paid in crypto, so you can continue to accumulate more and more. There's also no annual fee and no foreign transaction fee, but the card is only available in the US. So guys, be sure to sign up to BlockFi using the link in the description below and make that first deposit to get up to $250 of free Bitcoin. Could this happen to AMC on the American Stock Exchange? And I think right now the actual answer is, is that I don't really know. This is a Chinese owned exchange that cancelled and suspended trading to protect a Chinese based investor. China obviously has very different values and very different aims compared to the United States. But saying that, could a United States stock exchange, which is largely funded by United States hedge funds, cancel trades to protect those United States based hedge funds? Well, anything is possible. Now you may say Tom, can't Sidney Allen Ken Griffin just ask the New York Stock Exchange to turn off the exchange when AMC starts to squeeze? That way Ken Griffin won't get margin called and won't have to pay for his margin call and if anything he can just add to his short position even more. But as Hang Lu says, why didn't the New York Stock Exchange halt things and revert AMC and GameStop to the proper price when its president even acknowledged that AMC's share price wasn't properly being reflected? Back in January, it wasn't the New York Stock Exchange that halted trading on GameStop and AMC. It was brokers like Robinhood turning off the buy button. And again, back in June, when AMC ran up again, the New York Stock Exchange again did not turn off the trading and did not turn off the exchange. They just let it run and said, hey, what will be, will be. And Hang Lu says that's right because it wasn't hurting the elites in that scenario. Ken Griffin isn't technically part of that elite group like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs and Bank of America. In this nickel play, JP Morgan Chase is the largest counterparty to Jing Wanda and therefore stands to lose the most. So all of a sudden when it's JP Morgan losing tons and tons of money, the New York Stock Exchange would be concerned and would halt trading. But if it's only Citadel and Ken Griffin, they couldn't really care. And believe it or not, even Jim Cramer is saying that the pressure from defaulting funds and hedge funds that have huge withdrawals are causing immense problems. As Stonks Batman says, blue chip stocks are in a bubble. The hedge funds treated them as a savings account. They tossed all of the gains they made into blue chip stocks. Now retail investors are doing the same thing, but with shorted stocks. A lot of liquidity in the markets is parked, and I believe the scale will till. Because obviously blue chips was the collateral for those large hedge funds against their short positions. As long as the blue chips kept going up, they didn't have to cover their shorts because they would never run out of margin. And they absolutely had to keep these blue chip stocks continually going up to not get margin called. 
But now, many of these blue chip stocks are already down 10 to 20% from their highs, and some even more. And therefore, many of these large hedge funds are going to be running out of margin and will end up being margin called. But obviously when tons and tons of these hedge funds end up being margin called and AMC squeezes, many brokers are likely to go under and end up bankrupt. Donahue George has posted a tweet and I think this is absolutely what's to come for a number of other hedge funds. He says another hedge fund bites the dust. ABT Global shutting down is just another domino falling. TikTok, hedgies, justice is coming. ABT Global is shutting down as hedge fund gets hit by an unravelling of growth trades. The firm's hedge fund lost only 8.5% last year, but was down by double digits in 2022 through the last month alone. And Donahue George also tweeted saying BlackRock lost $17 billion due to its Russian exposure. I wonder if they'll have to liquidate assets to cover their losses. Fortune posted an article saying BlackRock just lost $17 billion due to its Russian exposure. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, as Western banks are owed $121 billion by Russian entities. This is only going to make those margin requirement matters worse, as these hedge funds have now lost an additional $121 billion. And Dr. Marco Metzler reckons that Russian default will soon have a spillover effect into international banks and leasing companies entering the next phase of the global financial meltdown. Guys, be sure to let me know down in the comments below what you think about brokers going bankrupt during the squeeze and whether you think this is what's to come for the wider market. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.